I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. to become clearer. What a revelation! Their success. I never... Some would say a lucky guess, I would say a moment of genius.
Is there something I am not seeing? The pieces of the puzzle are finally coming. Certainly, officer. The lounge? A package? Oui, it is quite hard to miss. Oh, how silly of me. I must have had my head in the clouds this morning. I'm sorry, I can't help you further. Besides the terrible rain? No. I woke, began my duties with Mademoiselle. I had already laid out a clean dress. I helped her into it and prepared her for the day before getting started on tidying her room as neat as a pin. And the bracelet was still there when you left the room for breakfast? I am sure of it. I had it down before Mademoiselle Angeline. Merci, Mademoiselle. Your assistance has been invaluable. of the puzzle are finally coming together. Another success. I... Certainly, officer. How could I not be? I may not enjoy his other works, but how can one not be blown away by a story of two so deeply in love that they will risk everything just to be together?
Especially being able to draw similarities between Verona's star-crossed lovers to yourself and your dear... But I hadn't told. Mademoiselle, I am an officer of the law. It is my duty to uncover the truth. Please, you cannot say anything to Madame. She is against staff relationships of any kind. In her eyes, a relationship between staff is nothing more than a distraction. But he means so much more to you. Oh, officer. I have found my soulmate. At first, it was nothing more than pleasantries around the grounds. But that quickly changed. I know it's not proper for a young lady to pursue a gentleman. But once I knew his feelings reciprocated my own, why shouldn't I have followed my heart? Love transcends professional and societal rules. The mere thought of him was enough to make me blush. But I knew that Madame would never give her blessing. If we wanted to continue, we would have to do so in secret. The summer evenings here are just so beautiful. I often find myself walking around the grounds after my daily duties are complete. And it was one such evening that Luke was waiting for me at the gazebo. He looked ever so handsome. And the poem he had prepared. He had barely started reading and I was already a blubbering mess. Standing there beneath the warm glow of the falling sun, he asked for my hand, and I gave him my heart with no hesitation. Oh, I'm sorry, officer. I've been chattering on for so long. You have much more pressing matters than to listen to me rambling aimlessly. One should never apologize for such a charming and bewitching story of love. But you are correct. While the culprit still eludes us, my work is not yet complete. Merci, mademoiselle. Your assistance has been invaluable. to show you I didn't do it. And Madame, I need this job, Monsieur. Yes, another thing on my to-do list. I'm afraid it's not in the same condition as when I picked it up. At whose request? It was a favor for Lizzie. I didn't mind having to get it. Merci. I shall take everything you have told me into consideration. Really, officer, you are wasting both your time and mine. If you have something to ask, officer, I suggest you stop wasting my time further and just get on with it. And this is how she repays me? until I see her sufficiently punished. I am glad you have finally come to your senses and have seen her guilt. It is challenging at times, I will admit, but I can assure you the Van den Bosch name is as strong and prevalent as it has always been. I have tried my best to provide for Angeline, although sometimes she may not see it that way. She is not to know about what we have discussed. It is my burden to carry. You are accepting the hand you have been dealt and raising a fine young mademoiselle. That is all that can be asked of you. And you have done nothing but bother my staff and my family. I cannot stand here any longer and listen to this second Great officer, speaking such drivel.
The longer you are here, the further the criminal goes with my bracelet. But by all means, fire away. Maman is never happy with anything these days. Also, Florette does have a habit of not doing things exactly how Maman wants them done. And how does she react when she sees Florette not doing things the correct way? Maman has a temperament of a kicked cat. Florette has often been on the wrong side of it. And that is how she responded today? She was shouting at her, and when Florette would not admit she took the bracelet, Maman really lost her temper. I have not seen her that angry before. You have been of great help to my investigation, mademoiselle. I will do everything I can to find the culprit and return your bracelet. Huh. Some would say a lucky guess, I would say a moment of genius.
I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. What a revelation! Anything to show you I didn't do it. And Madame, I need this job, Monsieur. She never used to be such a witch. When the Viscount was alive, she was much nicer. He was the head of the house, he gave the orders, and he treated us right. I would have gone long ago, Monsieur. But my family can't afford for me to be picky about my employment. I was not aware you were supporting your family, and at such a young age. Papa lost his job at the factory just before he left for good, so Mama had to work even more. I was old enough, so I went to work. When I joined the Vandenbosch house, the Viscount was very kind. I didn't think he would care, but he wanted to help. He gave me some extra in my first pay pack, enough to keep the landlord from kicking Mama out at least. No one had ever been that nice before. I didn't know what to say, but all he wanted me to do was work hard for her. He even let me to go home and visit Mama and my brothers at Christmas with a food parcel from the kitchen. Mama said she had never seen so much food. It's always been hard for her. Even before he left for good, Papa wasn't around much, and even when he was, we both wished he wasn't. When I walked in Mama's house, everything seemed so much smaller. I must have got too used to the size of this house. I swear, you could fit our house in just this lounge. We didn't have much, but we didn't want for much. It was simple, and it was home. The valuables in the house do not determine the love it shares. Someone should tell Madame that. Not that she'd listen anyways. I will uncover the truth of what happened today, Mademoiselle. That, I promise you. Merci. I shall take everything you have told me into consideration. Certainly, officer. You have found the culprit, and the bracelet. Everything will be revealed in good time. Would you be so kind as to gather everyone in the lounge? Of course. Merci, Mademoiselle Elizabeth, for gathering everyone. Will Madame Vandenbosch be joining us shortly? She stormed past me not long ago, and I have not seen her return. Very well. Under usual circumstances, I would wait. But I think we have spent enough time on this matter, n'est-ce pas? We shall have to proceed without her. This morning started like any other, my usual ordinary patrol, until I was approached by Mademoiselle Elizabeth about a suspected burglary and a missing bracelet. 
A crime I've been falsely blamed for. That I shall come to. I began my investigation outside, but it was not long before I realized there were no signs of an intruder. So I turned my focus to those in the house. You. Florette, your time here at the house has not always been the easiest for you, shall we say. I do what Madame tells me. And to the highest standard, I presume. Madame's standards are very high. I do my best. And you would at least expect fair treatment for the work, not to be spoken to in such a cruel and vicious way. Monsieur? I refer to how poorly Madame Vandenbosch treats you. You are at her beck and call, and she does nothing but belittle you. That is Maman you're talking about. Just wait until... It is nothing but the truth I speak, Mademoiselle. Mm. All the while, Mademoiselle stands by and does not even notice such cruelty. That must have angered you. I... Perhaps you thought it was time they deserved some retribution. Stop trying to put words in her mouth. I am merely giving her a voice, one that has been silenced for so long. Maybe I do think she deserves it. She's had the world handed to her on a plate, and the likes of me get nothing. A motive begins to rear its head. You're just trying to get me to admit to something. Well, I've done nothing. Uh, allow me to finish. I am sure you will want to hear what follows. Let us return to this morning. I was only trying to help. As any friend would, even knowing your late return would anger Madame Vandenbosch further. But in the matter of the missing bracelet, it gave you a rather solid alibi. I told you I didn't do it! There is no feasible way that you could have made it into Mademoiselle Angeline's room while she was present with Mademoiselle Elizabeth, removed the bracelet, and still completed your duties. Which takes us to Mademoiselle Elizabeth. Mademoiselle Elizabeth, you have been with the Van den Bosch family for quite some time now, correct? That is correct. You have grown close with both ladies of the house and your fellow members of the house staff, would you say? Of course. And I certainly hope they feel the same. You yourself told me Madame Vandenbosch would not stand for it, and you would both be out of a job. Elizabeth? What is he talking about? A love that is reminiscent of Romeo and Juliet, one that must remain hidden from the world from fear of expulsion. If you don't stop, I will tell Maman. You can't speak to her like that. It may be a tone you do not like, but it is no worse than your maman's ruling that forced them into secrecy to begin with. I'm sorry. This isn't how I wanted you to find out. We couldn't risk Madame finding out. I don't know what I... we would do without this house. What are you talking about, Elizabeth? Luke and I... we... we're in love. Luke? The gardener? But why wouldn't you tell me? For fear of Madame and her rule, and if neither of you had employment, there would be no way to pay for a wedding, perhaps. It was never our plan to go behind yours or Madame's back. You must believe me. You two are to wed? Yes. Well, no. Not today, as Officer Poirot suspects. Please, it's not what you think. It is not always what one thinks, or how something may appear. Rather, where the evidence points, and that is to Mademoiselle Angeline. You can't believe I would hide my own bracelet.
I have nothing to say. How dare you speak to me like that? You have no idea what you are talking about. You can't actually believe I would hide my own jewelry. If you didn't, explain to me how your memento tin with the bracelet inside came to be lodged inside the chimney of your bedroom fireplace. You have no proof I put it there. Besides you being the only one in the room alone, even after finding the bracelet, I still did not know why you had done it. Until I contemplated why Madame was selling so many heirlooms and art. You had no right to snoop through our house in the first place. When it is part of my investigation, I have every right, mademoiselle. The unpaid bills and final notice from the telephone company... Maman can do what she wants with her art. That means nothing. But when there was no more art to sell, what then? You could not risk her taking your father's bracelet and selling it. Hmm. So... You staged a burglary pretending it had been taken, preventing her from selling it. Then you stood back as the innocent Florette paid the price. She didn't think about me at all. She was going to take my bracelet and sell it off. It would have just ended up on some old wrinkly wrist. I didn't think Maman would blame her. I didn't think she would do anything. But she did. And somehow that evidently didn't cross your mind. When Madame returns, you shall have it all to explain. Maman can't know what I have done. She will be furious. But Mademoiselle Florette will be proved innocent. And that is what is important. No crime has been committed. So I see no reason why this should continue any longer. It is time you considered the consequences of your actions. And now you must face them head on. Maman, you're home. Of course I am. And I brought someone that will bring some order to this chaos. Major, I can assure you I have this situation under control. From what I have heard, you are far from it. The missing bracelet has been found and the guilty party has been identified. I am well aware that the maid servant was behind it all. And yet I see her standing as free and innocent as you and me. I am sure Madame Van den Bosch has informed you of her suspicions, but I am afraid it was merely speculation. Excuse me? After conducting a full investigation, the evidence and facts led me to deduce I certainly hope you are not accusing my daughter of... I'm sorry, Maman, he's right. Florette is innocent. I just wanted to show you. Shh, girl. I will not have you guilted into taking the blame for that sticky-fingered girl. Perhaps it would benefit you to remember you are nothing more than a simple officer of the law. Officer Poirot, a word. Madame van den Bosch was forced to make her way to inform me, alone, I might add, of the goings-on at the house today. Major, with all due respect, she was impeding the investigation. This may be how some officers act in the city, but here we show respect to our citizens. You are an officer of the law and should act as such. Insubordination like this will not be tolerated. As the ranking officer, I have conducted my investigation and... Ranking officer? Ha! You are an auxiliary officer. You have little authority over anyone, let alone a major. You would be wise to remember who is close friends with your commanding officer. After what I have heard of your past in the city, I'm sure he would look upon today's events as another failure at the hands of Officer Poirot. Oui, 
Major. Now I suggest you do your duty and escort the maidservant to the station where she can be formally charged and... Right away. I'm sorry, mademoiselle. This is not the outcome I expected. Maman was right. We'll always pay the price for the upper class's actions. We will do everything we can to clear your name. What can you do now? Madame said I'm guilty of a crime and I'll be punished. That's that. A crime that was never committed. Once the truth is explained, this wrong shall be set right. Angeline did not intend for you to be arrested. Surely you know her better than that. I should have known better than to expect anything else. Justice and fairness don't reach the likes of me. What you saw today was not justice. In the eyes of the law, you are innocent and had been harshly treated and wrongly accused. No one will be going to jail. But that doesn't help my employment, does it? That I cannot save. But your freedom, I shall make sure of that. Detective Poirot, I trust this finds you well. It has been many years since our paths last crossed, and while I'm sure your recollection of the events may differ from mine, I hope that receiving this letter has not rekindled a sense of animosity toward myself or the Van der Bosch name. The impression you made is something that has stayed with me since that day. It compelled me to reconsider the sport young lady I would have inevitably become and help shape me into the woman I wished to be. You made me see the childish and selfish girl in me that did not consider the consequences of her actions or how they may affect others. Although Maman may see the events of that day differently, I believe the compassion you showed for our maid Florette, as well as the drive to uncover the truth and accept no alternative, was a testament to your character and professionalism. Although I wish it were under different circumstances, your assistance is once again required, and I hope you will consider this as my formal request for your service. This forthcoming weekend was due to be one full of joy and happiness at the announcement of my engagement to Gideon Demir, whom I love dearly, bringing together two illustrious families, but it has been shadowed by deceit, extortion and blackmail. The Van der Bosch name is being held to ransom by a mysterious party, and I am afraid I do not know who I can and cannot trust. We are holding a small gathering to celebrate our exciting news with what Maman calls the dignified elite, those that are well respected and held in high regard in both our close inner circle and society. Our private matters have always remained just that, so I fear one of those invited may be the person who is out to ruin our name, but for reasons I cannot fathom. I have enclosed a first-class rail ticket for you to join us for the announcement, and having contacted your superiors and the correct authorities to request your assistance, which they were more than happy to grant me, I shall expect your arrival with great anticipation. There shall be a carriage waiting for you at the station to bring you directly to Mnemosan House. I thank you in advance in our time of crisis. Yours respectfully. Angeline van der Bosch.
Bonjour, my name is Hercule Poirot. I am here at the invitation of Mademoiselle Angeline. Ah, Detective Poirot, we have been expecting you. Please come in from this frightful cold. Merci. I don't think I would have lasted much longer out here before turning into an icicle. Welcome. I am Archibald Sterling, the head butler. Please accept my apologies. I have a rather pressing matter, but I will see that you are attended to immediately. Do not trouble yourself on my behalf. I am sure I am more than capable of finding my room. I shall straighten myself up and be ready to join the party. Ah, there is no rush, Detective. Dinner will not be served for some time. So please, make yourself comfortable. Once you have settled in, I am sure that Miss Angeline will be happy to see you. She has been eager for your arrival. She's not been herself recently. You will be staying on the first floor. I believe your room is one of the two on the west side of the house. Merci. I am sure we shall speak again soon. Thank you.